us. Um, <clears throat> here we are now in the third section of the, of the class, and this is the functions and their graphs. And so let's get started. A relation is a correspondence between two points uh, or two sets. So it's um, I'll show some examples of what that is in just a little bit. Um, if x corresponds to y, we're going to write it in this notation here so you can see that with x with an arrow going to y. x will serve as the input and the y is the output. The set of all inputs for a relationship is called the domain of the relationship and the set of all outputs is called the range. This is something that's going to be important for us to understand and use. So. In our first example that we have here, the domain then is going to be all of our x values. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. And since this is a set, we need to write it in set notation. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, and we'll close the set. Our range then is going to be the collection of y values. So that's going to be 4, 5, six and seven and we're going to do something with this so that we can understand if it's a function or not and one of the ways we do that is we can draw a input with the input values one two three and four and a circle or an ellipse with an output collection which has four five six and seven and so <clears throat> One, we can see maps to four, two maps to five, three maps to six, and four maps to seven. Now, because each input maps exactly to one output, this is a function. Again, let me say that so you guys can see that again. Since one only goes to one number, two only goes to one number, three only goes to one number, and four only goes to one number, this is a function. All right, let's look at another example. Again, the domain is going to be a set, so that's going to be one, two, and three. Those are the x's. And the y we see is two, two, and two. Since it's repeated, we only write it once. Now let's see if this is a function. See if you understood what I just said just a bit ago. The outputs, so, so this is gonna be one, two, and three, and here is two. One goes to two, two goes to two, and three goes to two. Now, <clears throat> Since each input goes to one value, namely two, this is a function. Okay? Because they're all, even though they're going to one number, each one of them is going to one number. All right, let's look at one more example to see if we can make this totally clear. The domain here then is going to be two because the x values are all 2. And the y, the y values for the range are going to be 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so here's our collection of inputs. Our inputs are 2. Our outputs are 1, 2, and 3. And so 2 goes to 1, 2 goes to 2, and 2 goes to 3. This is not a function because the input goes to more than one value. So if we look in the others, this 1 only went to one value, the 2 only went to one value, and the 3 only went to one value. In this one we could see Clearly, each one of them went to one value, so it wasn't a big deal. In this last case, we see that the 2 goes to 1, 2, and 3. That makes it not a function. All right. 
To determine if a func if a graph is a function, we'll use the vertical line test. So let me show you uh, a quick just sketch so you guys can see. So if I had uh, some line, this blue line, um, I could use the vertical line to test it. So let's say that I used this red line and I could slide it along. Would it ever hit at more than one point as it slid along? So if I move that red line to here, how many times does the red line cross the blue line? It looks like it only hits it once. Because of that, this is a function. It passes the vertical line test and it only hitting it once. Uh, make sure I can label for you guys. This is the x axis, this is the y axis. Okay, let me show you another example. So if this is the x axis and here's the y axis, and I gave you a drawing that looked like this. And again, I used a red line to use vertical line test. See how it hits it in two spots? Because it hits it in two spots, this is not, not a function. Okay, it passes the vertical line test. And basically what the vertical line is gonna do is you basically you could use a ruler or a pencil on any graph, just slide it along. And if it ever hits it at more than one spot, that is going to cause it to fail, not be a function. Okay? All right. So let's find values of a function. So we're going to use the function notation. So what this is telling us is for this function here, everywhere I see x, I'm going to replace it with 3. So I'm going to get 2, 3 squared minus 1. So that's going to be 2 times 9 minus 1, which will be 18 minus 1, which will yield 17. So when f of 3 is equal to 17, we can write this as a point also as 317, if you guys want to write it as a point. All right, the next example, this 3 in front tells us what we're going to do is we're going to go 3 times the function itself. So then that would make it 6x squared minus 3, and that is our result. Uh, the next one's a little bit tricky. Now, everywhere that we find out x in our original function, we're going to replace it with x plus 3. So again, we're looking at this guy up here. I'm going to go 2 times x plus 3 squared minus 1. Well, if you remember your expansions, uh, this will expand to be this, and then that's going to be 2x squared plus 12x plus 18 minus 1. And so our final result is going to be 2x squared plus 12x plus 17. My apologies for that writing. Uh, and that's the result for f of x plus 3 for that specific function that we had up here again. Okay? Uh, something that's going to be very important, um, most of you that are in this class are STEM majors, um, or I, I, I believe you are, you're going to go on to take calculus. This idea that I'm about to show you is a critical one in calculus. It's the difference quotient of a function f at x is given by this. So we need to be able to understand function notation. Uh, this will be used quite a bit in calculus. And so understanding it now is something that will be beneficial. Um, I'm going to do one example for you guys to show you how to do it. Um, uh, don't be surprised if this ends up on the exam. Uh, so let's do an example real quick. So if we're given this function here, uh, so f of x is 2x squared. This problem has multiple pieces. So that first piece, the f of x plus h, is going to become uh, 2x plus h squared. So that is the f of x plus h. 
minus the f of x, which we know is 2x squared, and that's all going to be over h. Now we need to do some algebra, obviously, to clean this up, and so it's going to become 2 times the quantity x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 2x squared all over h. Uh, this will then clean up to be 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 2x squared all over h. And we can see here that we have some things that will clearly be able to go away. Uh, and so we're going to get 4xh plus 2h squared all over h. And then we can factor out an h, so we're going to get 4x plus 2h times that h out front with an h on the bottom. We know then that we can cancel those h's out. So this will cancel this. And we end up with a result of 4x plus 2h. That is our answer. This is an example of the difference quotient. Um, I strongly suggest you guys practice this. All the best.